Hi there, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about all things latex leku. So I have a few with me today. I um, have my Hera ones, which are the first ones I made. And then I have my Ahsoka ones, which are the most recent. And I also have the uh, ripped in half model of my sister's Numa leku. So I've made a few. Um, I'm not a professional, I'm just an amateur uh, in my garage uh, figuring these things out as I go um, but I wanted to make this video to encourage uh, any of you out there wanting to experiment or be creative um, and who are brave enough to try making their own to give it a go. Um, I really enjoy making these headpieces and I can't explain enough how cool it is to wear a costume that you yourself have put together. Um, for me, the enjoyment comes mostly from building these costumes and then a tiny bit of actually wearing it at the end. Um, it's my hobby, I enjoy doing it, so I hope you enjoy the video. So a quick overview on how I make these uh, Leku prosthetic headpieces. Um, First of all, the first step is to make the mould, so that's what this is, although it's been ripped in half in the process. Um, but usually it would be one piece that's together, and I would put them onto a head mould here. Um, how I make the mould I'll get into later, but basically you're starting with a mould, and then you would put uh, latex, liquid latex on top of the mould building it up in both structure and colour until it is the right thickness. Then I peel the mould off, uh, sorry, peel the latex off of the mould and then there's some finishing touches with um, putting toy filler and you know fluff inside the latex, um, different tips with finishing and whatnot. So that is the overview of the process. So the first step is the mold. Now you're probably going to spend um, about at least half of the time on the mold itself so it takes a lot longer than you think it's going to take and the nicer your mold the nicer the leku will be. So this mold is really the basis for what shape the leku is going to be, um, how smooth they're going to be and how long they're going to last. So if you've got a good mold you're going to have a good leku. So don't be impatient at this stage, it's incredibly important and take your time and get it perfect. Don't settle for anything less than perfect. So I start with a head mould. Um, you can make these. Um, there's lots of information online on how to make them or you can just buy them as well. So a head mould. Um, and I start with newspaper. Um, lots of people use different mediums but newspaper is free for me um, I have lots of it so it seems like a really good place to start and I basically um, ball this newspaper up and using tape and lots of newspaper I make a rough mold of what shape leku I want um, it takes a while a couple of hours at least um, but it's super fun and it's when you get the first look at what your leku is going to look like. So start with the newspaper and the tape. Um, so you can see on this one the bottom layer here we've got the newspaper and we've got the tape holding it together so it's a black tape I've used for the Numa one. The problem with tape however is that we can't put latex onto tape. No matter how careful you are with the tape it's always going to gather you're going to have dimples you're going to have tape lines so it's not smooth enough to put the latex on top we want a perfectly smooth um smooth surface to put the latex on so i use foam so this one is uh covered in foam clay uh it seems to be the best medium to use. Um, I have tried with sheets of EVA foam but you get join lines which are annoying um, and the patterns never seem to line up 
quite perfectly. With foam clay, um, I usually get about three to four tubs of the 300 gram foam clay pottles. I'll show you again. So I get them from Lumen's Workshop, but the 300 gram foam bottles, I get about three to four of them, depending on how big your leku is. Um, so for the hair, I think I use two and a half. For a soak, I use three. And for Numa, I think I use three or four. Um, so it just depends how big your headpiece is, or depending on how much foam you need to use. Now the good thing about foam is that it goes on like foam clay and it dries exactly like EVA foam. So once it's dry, you can sand it, uh, you can paint it, you can treat it exactly like foam. So really good stuff, can't recommend it enough, uh, the foam clay. Then um, I seal the foam clay because if you put latex straight onto the foam, uh, it will soak into the foam and it won't peel off properly. We want a nice clean peel when we take these guys off the mold. So I use a good quality um, wood laminating PVA glue. Don't get a cheap one from um, a stationery store or something. You want a wood laminating PVA glue, um, the best one you can get. And that will make sure that this is hard and kind of laminated before we start putting latex on it. Uh, once you've done that, once you've uh, laminated it, that's the mould. Um, so that's a, a big part of uh, the project, mostly done when you've got the mould. Now we get into the fun stuff, and that is the latex. So the latex that I use is a brush latex for mold making. So they use this for prosthetics. I get a one litre tub from uh, Barnes is the brand name, but um, there are different qualities of latex, but I like to get a special effects one. So try and get one from a special effects store or, or something like that, and it will be the right consistency. You can get cheap mate, cheap latex sometimes at um, emporiums and all that kind of stuff. I've used that before and it's just too thin. It doesn't have the structure to hold itself together. So that stuff, the, the cheap latex is fine for putting on top of stuff, but it won't be a solid um, latex layer. And that's what we want because these guys have nothing in them. It's, it's just latex holding itself together and then it's got toy fluff stuffed in later on. So the structure needs to hold itself together by itself. So you need a good quality latex, that's key. Um, I use a makeup wedge to apply it. Um, and the reason why is there can be a lot of hard to get to areas, especially with a soaker, you know, under the sides and um, the toilets underneath. So um, in order to get in those hard to reach place, a small makeup sponge works quite well. And I just put it in a little pottle while I'm applying it. Now for um, the first couple of layers of latex, um, I make these layers completely structural. So about five layers are just my structural layers. So to give you an idea of how many layers we're talking about, my hero ones uh, have had a couple of repair jobs over the years, um, but they've got probably about 20 layers of latex on the hero ones with all the touch-ups. And my soaker ones, which are still pretty new, are at about 12 to 15 layers. Um, so that's how many layers of latex we're going to be doing. It is a lesson in patience because uh, you have to let it dry and um, there's lots of steps in between, but it's that it really is a lesson in patience. But the way I apply it is uh, the first five layers at least, you can do more, um, is applying it straight down first of all. So all the way over I would just go vertical lines and then let it dry. Next layer is, so layer two is horizontal. And I repeat this, so kind of crisscrossing the layers, layering them over each other. The reason why we do this is so that it can stretch in both directions. So if you just do lines this way, it'll stretch really well that way, but when you go to stretch it that way, it will split. So you want to have that structural integrity of it kind of crisscross layered on top of each other to make it nice and thick and firm so it can stretch off the model when, you, when we pull it off. 
Um, once you've done the structure layers, I just do it clear. So the bottom couple layers are completely clear. I don't add any color into them. I'm just putting latex on the structure. Then um, once I'm happy with it, it's kind of starting to take shape. I then start to add some color. Now I've tried a few things over the years of making these and the best paint that seems to work is acrylic paint. So I just add acrylic paint in with the, the latex. So add these two together. Now with latex, it is, or this latex, is white when it's wet and when it dries, it dries to be a kind of clear opaque colour. So uh, you're going to have to do some test squares on your colour and do some colour matches, especially if you are doing face paint like with Twilix. So with Hera, um, I had to do some test squares with the green face paint to get the right colour green. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, I know some people that struggle with trying to match face paint to the Leku, um, and that seems much harder when you're matching your Leku to the face paint. It's a lot easier. You can do some test squares. You can come up with a formula of how much acrylic paint to put in and what it looks like when it's wet versus what it looks like when it dries. So do some test squares with your colour before you put it on the mould. Then it's exactly the same process with the coloured latex, doing it in streaks until you get a nice even coverage. So yet again, it's probably going to take another five layers to get a nice solid colour. Um, so yes, so that was the, the deal with the hair. Um, it looked very pale green to begin with because I got the white layer underneath and then you're putting the green on top. Um, with the soaker, it was a little bit more complicated. I did just white layers for a long time um, and then I only put the blue stripes on in the final stages so most of the soakers is actually colored white um, once you have done the color and you're quite happy with the color now it's time to start thinking about the finishing so when you're doing those streaky layers you are going to get some lines it's not going to be a, a perfect finish that's okay in the final kind of stages, so the last probably about five layers, so we're up to about layer 15 now, you're going to be doing stippling layers. Um, so just dabbing the, um, the prosthetic with the sponge to get a kind of nice matte kind of finish, a skin-like finish is what you're aiming for. And you can fix a lot of imperfections at this stage. Um, yes. Then once uh, we're pretty happy with how it looks, and it, it will look amazing, you'll start to get very excited. Um, now is when we can start to think about taking it off the mould. Now this is the most terrifying step because this is when your leku are going to get put to the test. Um, the kind of thickness you are looking for before you take it off the mould is the thickness of a swim cap. So think a swim cap, and that's the kind of thickness we're going for. So I can show you the Hera ones. Um, it stretches nicely. You should be able to stretch it a decent amount without it splitting. Um, and it's good to test it on around the, um, the forehead bit. is probably the best place to test whether it's stretchy enough and whether you can start pulling it back off the mould. Um, and if it looks like it's going to work, then um, start pulling back. And a really important uh, thing to have at this step is a bowl of talcum powder or baby powder. Um, flour can also work if you don't have those things. And I just use a brush with a bowl and I have it nearby. And as you pull this latex off, you're going to talcum powder the underside of it. Not the top side, the underside. That's just come off the mould. And the reason why you do this is when you start to pull the latex off the mold, it's going to be sticky, like sellotape. And just like sellotape, when it sticks together, it can be a real pain to try and unstick it from itself. So the latex will want to stick to latex. Um, so you're putting talcum powder on there to stop it from sticking. Uh, be very generous with the talcum powder. Don't worry about putting too much on. Um, and you can also put it on the outside as well to stop it from sticking. Now the scariest thing about pulling it off is sometimes it's inevitable that you are going to have to damage the leku. You don't want to cut the latex at all. 
um, you want to try and keep it as a full piece so there's no seams but your mold um, I did have to cut the Numa ones down the middle so this was a full head mold like this and you see I've had to attack it with um, a knife to get it split in the middle so I could bend it and pull the, um, the prosthetic bit off the mold so it can be quite scary sometimes you have to be quite violent to get <laughs> the latex off um, with my Ahsoka the stripes were pretty badly damaged in the process of pulling it off the mold I want to reassure you guys to be brave keep going even though it might look like you're destroying all your hard work keep going pull it off the mold until it's fully off and it will be inside out and then you have to turn it back in the right way and it might look terrible <laughs> um, and you will get quite sad and you'll think you've ruined it but you haven't you most awesome thing about the way i make these leku is that you can always do touch-ups so anyone with latex will tell you that um, it degrades a lot quicker than silicon it does but when you make them yourself and you have the liquid latex you can always do touch-ups so my hero ones are probably about five years old They've faded multiple times, I've put holes in them, I've accidentally ripped parts of it and I've been able to fix them and touch them up with more latex layers on top. That's why this one has about 20 layers um, because I have had to do touch-ups and I can actually see on my Ahsoka ones, these are brand new but I've got a wee weak spot here that probably needs a little bit more lehu, more latex on it. Um, so you can always do touch-ups. I fixed the stripes on there so I made them slightly brighter as well. Um, so you can edit these. I mean, if you decided you, you don't want green anymore, I could make them red or I could um, make them blue. Um, so you can change and fix these up afterwards. So, I digress. <laughs> Once you've got the latex bit, so the latex prosthetic, off its mould, turned in the right way now we can think about filling it so i fill the ends with rice so just normal rice you have in the kitchen um, and i fill them up to about here with rice and that's to add a bit of weight realistic weight otherwise i mean you don't have to but um, otherwise they'll be very light and they kind of don't sit very right they kind of poke out so adding a bit of weight to the end um, helps them kind of sit right on your head. I then use uh, a toy fluff, so the toy filler, you get it in big bags, and I put it inside and I stuff it in the, um, the montrails there um, until they're nice and plump. If they get a little bit wrinkled, so you see there's a little bit of wrinkling there, you can just add more fluff until it sits nice and right. Um, yes, so that's um, the filler. Once it's been filled I then like to attach it back onto a head um, like I've got with my Ahsoka ones and when you've done that that's when you can start worrying about the finishing touches so if any damages have occurred if there's any holes or there's any wear and tear from the process this is when you can put your final couple layers of latex on to fix up any damages that might have occurred so putting the stripes back on or with my hair ones putting the uh the tattoo symbols on as well um i did that all afterwards after i had the toy fluff in it and then try it on enjoy it um it's a really exciting part when you've you've finished and it, it looks great and then you have to start thinking about how am i going to attach this because I assume you guys don't want to wear these leku for just five minutes around home. You want to go out to conventions and, um, you know, cosplay as these characters. So you need to start thinking realistically about how am I going to attach this to my head for a whole day. So with the Rebel Legion, sometimes, you know, I'm trooping for eight hours. So, I, and this needs to be able to stay on my head for a long period of time and stay there comfortably. So luckily with Twilix, uh, they usually have a head wrap or a head piece. Hair is amazing because she's got this white flight cap and I've got a, a chin strap that holds it on. So I don't need anything to hold the Hera ones on. Um, it's literally just a wig cap and uh, these guys go straight on over top. 
sometimes if I want it a little bit more stable, if I'm doing an extra long troop, um, I can wear a swim cap um, underneath and this, the latex sticks quite nicely to the swim cap, just adds a bit of extra grip. With uh, Togruta, or with a lovely lady Ahsoka, um, she doesn't really have a headpiece at all, so I was kind of, I hit a brick wall and I was, this headpiece kept slipping back and I didn't know how to hold it on and I've actually got a Velcro headband that goes on underneath um, and so the Velcro is underneath, out of sight, so you do have to think about how am I going to attach this to my head. Some other options are prosades, so a latex glue that you can use to stick it to your skin. Not for everybody, but um, a good option. Um, and like I said, other some people put wig clips in so it can stick to their hair. But have a good think about what works for you and how you're going to attach this to your head comfortably. You don't want to ruin your ears or give yourself a headache with these things. You want to be able to enjoy the experience. So think about the attachment. Um, other than that, have fun with them. Um, they're beautiful Leku, I really enjoy wearing these ones, I enjoy the fact that it's just the latex, there's no foam, there's no um, kind of internal structure to it, it is its own prosthetic, um, they're fully flexible so they can move, uh, people can touch them if they want, um, and they do bounce around when, you, when you're moving, and you can move your head fully, especially the Ahsoka ones, I really wanted to move my head, I didn't want to be stuck in this head cast, so... Um, you get full movement from them, very comfortable to wear, and good luck with your own um, projects. Like I said, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm happy to help whoever wants help and to encourage you guys to be creative and give it a go, because um, that's what cosplay is all about. Um, so good luck. Um, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Katzenjula. Um, there's also other videos here that go into more detail on how I make um, these Liku and some of my other cosplays. So comment if you want to, like, subscribe, whatever, and enjoy your cosplays. May the force be with you.